I don't know if you can see way in the distance over there, the Pleasure Beach. I'm going over there this evening. Today is the first day that the Big Dipper is back up and running after its glam up, as they call it. It looks really fresh with all the paintwork on it. And tonight I get to strap on a harness and go walk along a wooden coaster. So come join me. This should be fun. Sitting here waiting for the uh, safety briefing and then we uh, Get the harness on and go walk around the Big Dipper. Had a shot on it earlier. Um, it's still as raucous as ever, which is fantastic. Gives it some character. And this bit over here, you'll probably see it when we actually film. They've not painted around here. Uh, but hopefully they're still just chiseling away at it and it'll uh, all look completely fresh by its birthday in August, I want to say. But anyway, hopefully in the next few minutes we'll get uh, kitted up and uh, start the event. Although you're not walking the whole thing, you'll walk a section of it. Think of the guys each morning, doesn't matter what the weather is, they have to walk the entire track and they're doing inspections to check that you want to make sure that all the, um, the rails are in alignment, there's no damage, there's no nails not where they should be, there's no rot or broken uh, supports or whatever. All of that happens before the park opens. They're split into two teams, so if you get the Grand National, which is the short straw, you get the Blue Flyer, which is the Kiddie Coaster, and if you're doing the Big Dipper, you also do um, the Nickelodeon Street, so that's how it's, it's shared out. I like to stop here just because this for me is kind of classic pleasure beach and it's got coasters from all different eras all interacting with each other. They're having like a hundred year old coaster, state of the art uh, launch coaster. The only one of its kind left in the world from the 1970s for the steeplechase. This is where your enthusiasts usually say, oh this steeplechase takes up a lot of space. Um, but we like the steeplechase because it is unique. Um, and um, obviously the big one um, as well. But this does also present to people, because um, people take their phones on rides all the time, even though we tell them not to and they try and film. Um, and so if you drop your phone on a ride like this, um, the reason we won't go and get your phone during the day while the rides are running is just because to do that, we physically have to shut down five rides in order to get into this area to take someone's phone. So a modern day problem. But you do get a nice view of our brand new track on the big one behind us. We're currently retracking the big one in sections. There's another section being done this winter. Um, last winter we did 104 metres. You can always spot the old track and the new track because the new track on the big one's nice and shiny and red, whereas you can see some clearly some old track over on the helix over there. But the other telltale sign is the cow horn supports part on the new track is a lot closer together, a lot more frequent compared on the old track and we've done that deliberately because we want we want the ride to be here in another 25 years time So we're at the sort of famous head chopper moment on the ride. You've got to remember that the train will be travelling this way um, at that point as it comes towards, um, towards the end of the ride. Really nice, cool moment. But if you imagine if you're sat, I'm stood on the track, but if you're sat in the car now with your arms in the air, which you should be holding up to the bar, obviously, um, then you see the amount of clearance um, that we've got. And we come through here obviously quite fast, um, and you'll notice lots of different things, which is a great reminder not to wear hats. Um, when you're on um, roller coasters. But also, the bit that you probably don't see is the sand under here. Um, and this is authentic Pleasure Beach sand because Pleasure Beach was actually originally built on the beach. Um, there's only a few spots really around the park where you can still see this. Here is one of them. 
over by Infusion, there's a little bit, under the flying machines. So if you look through the window really carefully in the shop uh, and, and to the flying machines um, working, as you can actually see the foundation there. We've got some great pictures of that ride, uh, which is our oldest ride from 1904, and it's surrounded by sand. Um, it's obviously still in the same location, um, and then it's got all the people in their Sunday best um, all, um, in Seapito. Really nice, um, nice, nice picture. If you Google it online, it'll come up. Yeah. Um, and then the one that no one ever know, really knows about is actually underneath the Nickelodeon Street Station, where we used to run two trains. We got a transfer track. All under there, you could build a sandcastle. So it's authentic Pleasure Beach uh, sand. A bit. <laughs> a bit like a ladder, that one. We stood on Star Hill. It's a good photo spot. And it's called Star Hill because before the Bulgard Hotel was there, there's was a pub called Star. Um, and this used to be south entrance to the park, which is why this went over it. What I think is really nice about it is that I think the big one was built like 60, 70 years later and they emulated Star Hill into the big one design and copied it from the big kid park. My, there's two things that annoy me about Icon. One of those is they had the opportunity to do a third one over there and didn't. And then I also hate that statue that goes right in the middle of the iconic uh, steeplechase sign. But that's just me, otherwise I love the ride. <laughs> Why would we have a big beam from there going across to the, the PB Express track? To transfer the train on Earth? Yeah, train very heavy, um, seven tons, as I said. In winter, when we want to do maintenance, we want to take it back to the maintenance shed, which is behind Valhalla, and we have to get it back there somehow. We can take it off in sections here by putting um, the block and tackle, moving it across, putting it onto a boat, an empty bogey on the um, PB Express track, moving it round to near the PB Express station. Um, and that it's a lot easier to train something off then and take it back than if you were trying to do it in the station here which is near impossible because obviously it's all boxed in. But we just copied this concept in a minute um, for the motor for the lift which I'll um, show you when we go around the corner. Honestly, I came here thinking, I don't know what this is going to be like. You know, we're going to walk on a wooden coaster. You know, they've got to walk the big one as well, but I'm doing the wooden coaster. Andy Highgate, anyone who knows Pleasure Beach knows him. He is unbelievable. Massive shout out to him, telling us stories all the way around. Lots of stuff I can put on YouTube. Uh, if you want to know some secrets, I highly recommend you come to this experience. It is 100% worth it. I can see me doing it again. The views, the stories, the behind the scenes if you are a geek if you love the pleasure beach this is an absolute must absolute hats off to the pleasure beach for putting an event like this together um, and it's definitely made me want to go up there 
and do walk the big one. Um, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that. Definitely would recommend it. Definitely would do it again. Um, and that's you know, and it's a cracking day as well. So anyway, I've been Chris. You've been watching Coaster Dad, and I will see you in the next one. Adios with with my oil because I got a bit messy.